hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com my name is jason newland this is let me bore you to sleep please only listen to this when you can safely close your eyes you can support me by going to paypal.me forward slash Jason Newland or you go to my website there's a gift me page on there also uh, if you would like to leave a testimonial there's a testimonial page on my website as well if you'd like to let me know what you think I'm getting more regular private messages telling me that uh, that you like listening to my recordings especially this podcast actually so maybe if you have sent me a private message you'd consider doing the same on the website on the testimonial page to make it public so people can so other people can read as well it's not going to help them read but so other people can read the message so it's warm in here I've got the heating on probably a bit higher than normal I've had the heat in the last few days just to sort of take the edge off but I've done some washing I've actually washed quite a few things so I've washed my body I had a bath I washed my dishes so I did the washing up and I also washed my clothes not all of them but a few I concentrated more on the bedding today so I'm trying to dry out the bedding I've got them draped over the radiator when I said draped not really they're more crumpled up along the top of the radiator because Andre will grab and rip it down onto the floor and I don't want him doing to my bed in what he does to everything else that seems to be on the floor what else is there to say um, I had a text message from Australia and it's the it's the second time because I got a message I think it was last week um, and I just wanted to say I'm, I can't reply to text messages that are international because my phone doesn't allow it my I'm on a pay-as-you-go um, phone. Basically, it's five pound a month, so they they take the five pound every month. But it's pay-as-you-go, so it's not a contract. But it's it minimum. It, I can't spend any money other than just by. All I can do is just use the minutes that they give me that makes sense and five pound a month I think it's pretty good because I don't use the phone very much and when I do it's they're not usually like long conversations and every three months I get a booster because it's with EE which is the 
it's one of the providers in the UK of England and it's every three months I get uh, a free booster I can choose between I think it's 500 megabytes data or is it <clears throat> it might be 100 minutes 100 minutes talking time extra and it just keeps following on from there so it builds up and builds up and I've had it for quite a while which is cool and yeah it's it's growing I haven't bothered with the data as yet because generally I listen or I use my phone when I'm at home so I use the, the wireless broadband but when I do go out it's nice to have some data so perhaps I like to listen to the radio or something like that but because I'm a member of Audible I can listen to my audiobooks without any data because they've been downloaded and also the same with some of the music so it doesn't take any data either but what I might do is look at increasing the data so maybe next year I'll just what was that I forgot I think the next day the next bonus increase thing booster will be November so what I'll do is I'll probably increase the minutes again then November, December, January February I'll probably boost the, the data then March, April, May I'll boost the data June, July, August I'll boost the data September, October, November I'll boost the data so at the moment I think it's 500 megabytes I think I offer for 500 megabytes increase so I'll go from 500 to 1000 1500 2000 2500 so two and a half gigabytes worth of data a month and I suppose if I kept that going for a couple of more years or a year after that so November December, January, February 2021 February March, April, May 2021 June, July, August 2021 September, October, November 2021 so it'll be two and a half gigabytes then it'll be three gigabytes in November uh, no, whenever, February 3000 3 gigabytes 3.5 gigabytes 4 gigabytes 4.5 gigabytes so coming into 2022 
I'll have about five gigabytes a month to use on my data. Which is way more than I need unless I was going to be out regularly. But I don't really go out very often because I don't really want to. <laughs> I, d I don't know. Although I do need margarine. So that that's definitely had an impact. It's uh, so anyone says, well, what does uh, what impact does bipolar have on your life? And my quote answer to that was, I've run out of margarine. I need some, but I've not been able to get out. And I've got some tea cakes that are they're basically I think they're they're worn out now. They're not able to be eaten. And I could have eaten them yesterday or the day before, but I didn't have any margarine or butter to put onto them. And the best will in the world is just not the same dry. It'd be like eating dry Weetabix. And I know, maybe, um, I mean, I'm not being prejudiced against people that eat dry Weetabix. You know, forgive me. But it's not the same to me. It's, it's you know, a bit dry, you know? I mean, sometimes, I did this the other day, and... Um, I'm going through a little period of eating Weetabix. It all happened because I run out of breakfast cereal and it was time to buy some new breakfast cereal. And I don't normally wait until I'm completely out of any breakfast cereal before I buy new breakfast cereal. But on this occasion, I did. Because I had two boxes of shreddies that I bought from Iceland. And I didn't want two boxes of shreddies. Because I had to carry them home. And they, they take up quite a lot of room in a carrier bag so I only really wanted one box but it had the offer it was I think three three pound for one box or four pound for two I couldn't I couldn't move on without I, I couldn't I had to buy two how could I justify just buying one box for three pound it just I'd struggle with that you know I probably, I'd have to write write some kind of you know a really stern letter to myself telling myself off but you know and uh, it's enough regrets I don't, I don't want to add more including breakfast cereal so I got two boxes I think it set me up with a self a self you know a false sense of security almost like you know oh I've got two boxes of shreddies I'm never going to have to buy breakfast cereal again this is going to last me forever well, of course it's not going to last forever but it's, sometimes there's no telling me sometimes I just like get it in my mind great now it's one less thing to think about not that I spend Hours thinking about breakfast cereal, but I felt almost comfortable and relaxed in the whole breakfast cereal domain where it comes to purchasing more of that type of food. 
just didn't have it on my shopping list in my head. I don't have an actual shopping list, but I, I do have a head, and I take that with me to the to the shops. And so I didn't bother buying any any more breakfast cereal because I already had in my mind. I just had this memory of putting both of the boxes of breakfast cereal of shreddies on top of the cupboard and they were sideways but a long ways across that makes sense so like sliding in in so all you could see was the side but standing up and both and both of them you had to kind of I mean you could read what it said on the side but it's easy when you know what's been what's on there it says shreddies but if you really wanted to um, read it properly you'd need to get some kind of um, hoisting system attached to the ceiling and, and you know, balance your legs and your body so that you're to one side maybe to the right and you could just and then hoist you up so you're at the level of where the cupboard is and you could read it or you could just take the box down and read it I suppose that would probably be easier and so I didn't I just had that memory and thinking it's fine I've got loads there I've got loads calm down Jason plenty of cereal yum 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 don't think about it till the morning well I ran out of breakfast cereal and I think it was on Saturday last Saturday and I thought what am I going to do and then I thought well what do I normally do in this situation and then I remembered I normally what I normally do is I just go and buy some more breakfast cereal but because I'd been eating shreddies I wanted, I wanted more shreddies I got a taste for it I really you know got a, not hooked but you know just I want more you know, that's what I want now. I want shreddies. I mean, I'll be honest. I really am, but on this occasion, I'll, I'll be honest. I sometimes have a bowl of shreddies in the evening. But if, you know, just as a little treat. Just to, to keep me going till breakfast time. Well, I say evening, I'm talking morning, but then I have them again in the afternoon. But my evening is the morning. But then it was too late because last Saturday I didn't have time to go to the shops, to go to Iceland didn't have time to get on the bus and uh, go there and I thought what shall I do wait a minute it wasn't Saturday it was Friday ah oh, yeah it was Friday yeah I remember now because what I did oh yeah I remembered that I had ready break in the cupboard but it's not it's not in the box it's in a a bag because I I keep everything sealed up in my kitchen. Everything's like in bags and boxes, you know what I mean? 
everything's nice and sealed and uh, I thought I'll have ready brick now for those people listening who don't know what ready brick is it's kind of like porridge but nothing like porridge yeah I don't know if that makes sense it doesn't taste like porridge kind of has a similar texture to porridge I think uh, with with ready break basically it's really easy to make I, and I, I really do like it I really I like it a lot and what I do to prepare it is I put you put milk into the um, saucepan turn the heat on the hob of your kitchen cooker when I say kitchen cooker you're not going to have a bedroom cooker are you unless of course you have a cooker in your bedroom I, I produce enough heat myself by turning the radiators on so I I don't always do it in that order sometimes I turn the hob on first and then I put the milk into the saucepan and then boil it up the, the milk in the meantime whilst that is occurring I pour some ready break powder I don't know how to explain it it's almost um, I don't know anything else that really is like that it's, it's kind of it's white flakes and I suppose not the same as um washing powder because there's nothing like it really yeah it must be something that's similar to it I keep having this like image of maybe glue but that's what kind of that's what ready break turns into ultimately if you have ready break and you leave the plate or the well dish probably try and eat it off a plate up go everybody everybody it will go everybody and everywhere but if you leave the dish on the sideboard or just you know in the kitchen or on a table or I don't know on the roof I don't know where in the greenhouse I don't know where you eat your breakfast the spoon will be stuck to the dish and the inside or you know the the rim oh I know it's, it's the rim but you know the you know the outside but the opposite the the inside of the dish and the sides of the inside that it's almost like glue like it's rock solid so it does need to be soaked very much very much so that's one of the things that I don't understand you know people not all people but some people, they don't, they don't soak things. So if I went round someone's house for dinner, 
and they expected me to do the washing up because I'd had dinner. First of all, I'd never go back. And secondly, I'd expect any saucepans to be filled with water. to soak the the, the thing because if you cook in a saucepan and you just leave it to dry for a couple of hours it's very difficult to wash and I know this because well I used to work as a kitchen porter a few times but when I was younger in a kitchen very busy kitchen a few different jobs doing that And the chef had hand, had a big saucepan that had been used to make soup or a stew or something. And it was just impossible to clean. Yeah, if they'd filled it with water and let it soak for half an hour, it would have been a lot easier to clean. So I lived in a place years ago. I lived in a lot of places. But this place, uh, we used to take turns cooking. So there was how many people? One, two, three, four, five. There's five bedrooms. So often there was five people living there. Sometimes less, or sometimes, sometimes more. Sometimes there'd be a visitor sleeping in the living room, but generally five at the most, and we'd take turns cooking. And it was kind of an unusual experience because there's one person who used to cook, and he liked cooking. Uh, you know, like finger food stuff, like Mexican wraps and stuff like that, and to not to not torpedoes, torquito, torquito, nachos, nachos, chimichanga. I don't know the things where you got the like the cheese and the sauce, and you got the nacho, um, like. Uh, crisp biscuit whatever they're called well we'd all like be tucking in and you know using a fork to get this you know to get a lot of stuff because this it's very messy and he'd get the ump because it was he said it's finger food Why aren't you eating it with your fingers? Well, my answer is because I know where my fingers have been. That's why. I don't eat with my fingers. Which isn't completely true, but... And he had a little tantrum. He did. He started just jumping up and down on the table. No, he, he, did, he didn't do that at all. He was dancing. And then another person that lived there. I honestly, I can't believe he'd cook. And even if there's only three people or two people he was cooking for, he would use every single kitchen item. Everyone. Everything. Like every spoon every fork, every saucepan, every plate and the washing up because whoever didn't cook did the washing up that was the agreement I remember going down there once and saying seeing all the washing up and I said no I'm just going to get a takeout 
you can keep your food. It's, it's, it's better it's me spending £20 on a takeout than spending four hours washing up. He literally... Honestly, I think he actually knocked on the neighbours' houses and borrowed some of their kitchen equipment. I was seeing stuff I'd never seen before. Like different pattern plates that I've never seen in my life. It's like we were having, I mean, it was, what was it like? A shepherd's pie, and he had a wok. There was a wok there. Why would. What, you don't use a wok to, to make shepherd's pie. There was a George Foreman grill. We didn't own a George Foreman grill. Apart from anything else, it was a vegetarian house. So the shepherd's pie wasn't made of meat or lamb, you know, like it normally is. Um, I don't know what it was made of. Mind you, one of the people that lived there, oh, no, one, one of the people that lived there was really into um, what's it called? You know, you put bags, you know, like plastic stuff and cardboard stuff, and not refurbishment. Um, the word's gone out of my head because it doesn't interest me um, but yeah he was really into uh, the environment and looking after the environment and he used to plant trees and like everywhere he went he'd plant trees I mean, literally, I'll be walking down the street with him, and I'm continuing talking, and I stop, realise he's not standing next to me, and I look back, and he's there with his shovel. Didn't even know he had a shovel on him. Digging a hole to plant a tree. Didn't know he had a tree on him. It's like magically appeared out of nowhere. I was always picking up trash off the floor, like cans and stuff like that. I said it was really environmentally friendly, and this was a, quite a while ago before it was um, popular. And he. Anything, literally anything that you put down would disappear. Because you take it and you put it in the, the bin, the blue bin or the green bin, whatever bin it was. And literally, it just takes stuff. But what was ironic, it takes stuff, but then it'd be pick, bringing stuff back into the house that he found on the street. So he was taking the new stuff that we had and giving that away to the recycling people I just remember the word recycling yet he was bringing back old crappy stuff from the street to use instead of buying new stuff and no I've now I've talked about two of them cooking let's talk about him cooking we had a dinner he cooked the dinner. At the end of the meal, he said, Guess what? That's never a good sign. 
uh, a fellow saying you're you found my phone possibly and he said no he said guess what everything that you've just eaten I found in a bin a trash bin now that's uh, that's a bit of information that would be nice to know before isn't it it's it's almost it's like telling someone oh by the way the toilet overflows and it goes all over <laughs> and the water will go all over your trousers and uh, and your shoes and everything when you flush and tell me that before and then it might not flush but no I said, a trash, you got that out of a bin. He said, no, no, don't worry, it wasn't like a, it wasn't like a bin bin, it was, well, it was a bin, but it was outside of a supermarket, behind a supermarket. Well, the first thing, if you know, I do. I re. You know. I have a recycle bin here, and that bin gets very dirty. Even though I don't put any food in it, just the residue off of the packaging, it gets dirty and smelly. I've got a lid on it, but so that big dustbin, whatever it was where stuff was put probably guessing it's not germ free I'm just, just guessing or vermin free so so basically what he did is he went there and he picked out a bunch of food that had been chucked out by the shop and he cooked it and the food was fine you know, it wasn't, didn't, you know, it was fine, it was okay, but once he, <laughs> once he told me, once I heard the word, or the words, oh, that food came out of a bin, I didn't feel so well, oh, if I'm honest. wasn't the dessert that I was hoping for I said any any ice cream he said no nah, it melted okay and he put it's just the thing is you know in reality if more people did what he did it would change the world so you know it's a, it's a great great bloke but oh, I don't want to eat out of a bin <laughs> it's just a personal thing I'm weird like that I just I think I said to him listen mate I go to work so I don't have to eat food out of a bin. That's why I work. Because I had that in the past where someone would eat their food and they'd have a bit left of their food and offer it to me. I said, no, that's why I work. So I don't have to eat people's leftovers off of their plate. That's why, that's why I'm working. Or maybe I was just being ungrateful. I don't know. On oh, my... Uh, I was uh, recently seeing someone just... Uh, like last weekend, but... She said she didn't want to see me anymore because... My willy was too big. 
So it's been quite windy here lately. It's been quite windy and rainy and everything, but it's that time of year, isn't it? It's uh, <laughs> it's what is it? Autumn. What do you call it in America? Because you call um. Yeah, what is it? Spring. Oh, you call autumn fall, don't you? Which is it? Because the trees, the leaves on the trees fall. Is that why it's called fall? Because we call it autumn. I wonder why we call it autumn. That's what I need. I need a book. A book explaining the differences between English and American language and the words used and the phrases used and why because it does it does interest me actually to I think like sidewalk instead of pavement I mean, it's the mispronunciation, of course. Or mispronunciation. <laughs> mispronunciation. And such as route instead of route. Aluminum instead of aluminium. Agoraphobia instead of agrophobia. What other words? Less ice to square <laughs> instead of leck ice to square. What other words are there? Roof. What do you say in America? A roof. A roof instead of a rough. That's what dogs do. Dogs go rough. We don't have roofs on our houses in England, we have roofs. <laughs> no, we don't have dogs on there. That'd be cruel. What other words are there? Um, house. Yeah, it's sort of like a flat. America have apartments. We have flats. I'm pretty sure American... You have houses, because we have houses, but we don't, I don't think we have lots of different names for them though. I'm not saying that America name every single house, well this one's called Beatrice, you know, although oh, my dad used to do that, he used to name his house, and I refused, I'm not going to call it by a name simply because if you put the postcode into any postcode system the number of the house will come up not the name of the house simple as that if you need an emergency an ambulance they're going to be looking for a number not a name I've actually seen that in the past where I lived when I first moved here uh, when I was doing my college course it was an ambulance stopped because I was walking down my road and they actually asked me directions an ambulance going to an emergency course saying do you know which one of these houses is called pretty boy pretty happy place and I said uh, I don't know mate do you know what number is they said I don't know they didn't give it to us and I said well stop crying and he said oh, I'd like to have a cry it's Wednesday night I always get emotional Wednesdays I would have asked him why but I have other things to do 
Besides, I just set fire to one of the houses. <laughs> uh, no, I hadn't. I hadn't. Oh, I'm saying that. Oh. But yeah, everything's groovy. Everything's coolie kapuli. And it would be nice to. be nice to remember what I was talking about I was talking about food how did it get onto food how did it get onto talking about food and cooking then I'd end up talking about ambulances must have been a reason why surely I watched. Oh, I've got a joke for you. It's, it's not my joke. Nah, no, perhaps should have done it at the beginning. I say anyway, just for those that are still awake, those that are asleep won't hear it. It's. Um, and I was watching this film today, and it, I forget the name of the film. So it's this is not my joke. I'm just telling you, it's not mine. But uh, a man goes to a doctor. And a doctor says to him, to the man, you can, you're going to have to stop masturbating. And the man says, the patient says to the doctor, why? And the doctor says, I need to examine you. <laughs> um, see, I don't think I've ever heard that joke before. As it actually made me laugh. And I've heard a lot of jokes. And I don't normally tell jokes like that, but I just... I thought I'd share it because it's very funny, I think. <laughs> um, I was watching Naked Gun, did it two and a half or something? Like the third one in the Naked Gun films. And I can't remember watching it for years because there was bits in it that I don't recall. which was quite nice and it had Anna Nicole Smith I forgot what a lovely voice she had and um, that was just some really funny bits in it I didn't watch it all but it reminded me oh, I watched that film with I was going to Ireland to visit Andre like the original Andre and that film was on on the on the boat and I, I got talking to uh, a girl on there who I really, really liked. She was really nice. So I got talking to her. And I thought I was doing really well. We went to the cinema and everything on the boat. And we watched that film. It's only as we're pulling up or that the boat is like docking into Dublin that she says alright well uh, nice nice to meet you I'm going to have to go I'm going to go and meet my boyfriend uh, what so that was annoying and when I got back what well, basically we What did we do? Yeah, that's it. We got onto our coach. I got back onto the coach that I'd been on since because I travelled all the way to Wales, I think, on the coach. Got back on the coach and it took us to Dublin Station or wherever it is. And she must have gone her own way.
and as I got off the coach, I was chatting to some of the blokes that were on the coach with me that I'd been I'd seen throughout the journey. And I'm waiting in the Dublin um, station. I'm just like chatting and I'm about to go anyway but I'm just chatting to them and there was another bloke there as well and he just they were I think they were friends with him and he just joined and and they were talking about the women I some nice women on that boat I said yeah you should have seen the one I was talking to and I, I gave her quite a a descriptive description of her and how much I fancied her and everything. And then one of the blokes said, oh, there's my girlfriend coming. And he pointed, and it was, it was the woman that I'd been, spent the whole journey on a boat, and she was waving at him. <laughs> so I said, see ya. And I'm out of there. I get out. I couldn't believe it. I was just like, oh my God, here's me talking about this this woman. I wasn't saying anything bad about her, just that I really liked her and I think she liked me. And and uh, I think he was saying, oh, she sounds nice. I said, yeah, thinking to myself, you, uh, you couldn't get anyone like that. Well, actually, she was his girlfriend. So I just said bye and left. And went to McDonald's and just had a little chuckle. That is until I actually ate the burger. And remembered that, uh, I don't know if they still do, but in Ireland at that time, McDonald's used mayonnaise on their burgers. Which... It's a crime to humanity. It is wrong. Mayonnaise on a McDonald's burger. Come on. I mean, I mean seriously, come on. How did that even happen? Or did they, like, just... McDonald's opened up their first branch in, in Ireland the same as they do normally, same stuff. And everyone was complaining, wait a minute, this burger doesn't taste sickly. And it's, why, isn't it, why isn't it all sweet? Mayonnaise? We need egg. Yeah, well, that's what we need. We need egg and... I don't know what makes mayonnaise. Egg and something, isn't it? It's like, oh, no. I, I like eggs. I'm not prejudiced against eggs. They do all seem to look the same, but I'm not prejudiced against eggs. Some are bigger than others, aren't they? But I've never actually seen, outside of television, I've never seen big eggs, like in real life. I've only ever seen the normal sized eggs. So I like eggs. I like fried eggs I don't really eat fried food really but I like fried eggs I like boiled eggs no I don't I don't know why I said that I like fried eggs I like I like hard boiled eggs like boiled eggs where you can eat them and it's runny inside I like that kind of boiled eggs I like scrambled eggs I like omelettes. And that's it. Hardboard eggs. No. 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 And what I don't understand, because I've had a lot of jobs, worked in a lot of places, a lot of industrial places when I was younger 
I was in offices as well, and I don't know why there's always that one person that has to bring an egg to work. It's always that eggy man or eggy woman with one person. It's almost like maybe they think to themselves, I'm just too perfect. Everyone likes me it's too much. Everyone, I can't do anything to upset people. Everyone just likes me, whatever I do. What can I do to, just to annoy people? I'll bring an egg to work. So it's like the egg person. And it comes in two formats, doesn't it? It's either the hard-boiled egg or the egg sandwich. Or egg and crest sandwich. And I don't understand how the egg goes from being tasty to so stinky. Just in that it basically goes off, doesn't it? After it's cooked, eggs go off. They start to go, I don't know mouldy I suppose because I always used to think well basically let's face it how come is a question how come an egg sandwich smells worse than an eggy fart that's been all the way through your body going through the poo channel and that fart is actually much nicer on the senses than an egg sandwich. Why? Those are the things that I think about. I realise not everybody's that interested, but you're not supposed to be interested. It's a boring recording, isn't it? A boring recording. That's almost rhymy. Almost rhymy. <laughs> so it was Sylvia that sent me that text message. That's what I was going to say. Sent me a text message um, and phoned me. I missed the phone call. I can't. F- I can't phone back. Maybe if you can contact me on my email address, jasonnewland at hotmail.co.uk, and then I'm able to respond. But I can't, I can't respond via the phone, and I just don't want people to think that I'm being rude because I would respond, especially as you specifically uh, wanted to contact me. Although I think there are a couple of messages that I've not responded to yet which I need to look at but I haven't been I haven't felt great the last couple of days so I've been been sleeping a fair bit but uh, (sighs) oh it's nice to it's nice to feel relaxed isn't it Oh, so nice. Such a nice experience. I'm trying to think of any stories about that house that I lived in where we did all the washing up. Oh, there's one time my friend, I I love him so much, He's he's the one that he did all the washing up. He did he uses everyone else's cutlery and is one of the most gentle kindest generous people that I've ever known especially when it comes to washing up it's very generous there you can do more do more washing up but he's very he's genuinely just a beautiful person and we were we were all sitting down eating and he started talking about something I wasn't listening and 
his chair, his chair collapsed. So literally, he was just talking. Suddenly, he disappeared, and I couldn't stop laughing. And it was just so funny. The weird thing about it is when I moved in here, in this flat four years ago, I inherited my grandmother's, some of her furniture that was in storage. Uh, so I got her table, two chairs, and you know, I've got the TV unit. Uh, but basically, I've got stuff that I'm never ever going to give away ever, or keeping them for forever and ever. So this table and the chairs are going to stay with me. Even if I don't use them, they will stay, because I can. The, the table can be taken apart, so it's not. It's kind of flimsy, in a sense. I don't know, you wouldn't want to, I don't think you'd want to stand on it, I don't think I'd trust my weight on it, but I, I sat down on this chair, and again, it did, it collapsed, the chair collapsed under me, and I couldn't figure it out, because... Well, it doesn't make sense. It's a chair. Chairs are supposed to support your weight, aren't they? Those chairs hardly got any use at all because my nan, she had two chairs that she sat in, two comfortable chairs, both recliners, I think, but one was an electronic recliner. Because she had uh, physical issues, it helped her to get up as well, as well as sort of sitting down. But she'd alternate, she'd go into each chair. I think one was, uh, she pretty much did what I did. One was sort of for the recliner and one was just for more comfortable maybe. I'd have two chairs. I'd have a smoking chair and a farting chair. You know, it's just a standard thing, isn't it? But she, these chairs collapse. And I used to visit her, and I used to sit in the chair. Never had a problem. Admittedly, I was never as heavy as I am now. But there's not a huge difference. Maybe uh, a stone or so. So what my dad did is he, rein he reinforced the chairs. He took one back, well I think yeah, he might have took both of them back to his home and he reinforced them with wood. Now the one I sit in is pretty much okay. I feel it a little bit loose, but the other one that I don't sit in, I rarely sit in it and it's in my bedroom, it creaks when I sit in it. It almost as if it's saying, ow, really, ow, come on, get off, get off. So, you know, it's, although they're reinforced, I don't know. And next week, I'll have lots to talk to you about because I'm getting my garden shed delivered. And I will be creating my recording studio with that garden shed. It's going to be groovy. It's really, really going to be groovy. And I'm looking forward to it actually now be so nice just to have it 
there so I can just enjoy being able to make recordings do it during the day without any disruptions or interruptions any background sound well minimal anyway yeah I'll be good yeah and I can tell you all about the excitement of building it I hope it's easy uh, <laughs> I hope so it's only a little shed but I'm kind of hoping that it'll just like slide together and slot together but I don't know I'm not sure really not sure right well that's the end of this recording thank you to those of you that have left me messages send messages on Facebook people that have left testimonials I really appreciate it, it actually really makes my day just to hear that what I'm doing is useful and it does it it's hard you know the, the feeling I get is it's very very pleasant it's a very pleasant feeling and uh, brings brings meaning gives me meaning so yeah so if I just want to say thank you to those that have done that and now I'm going to go and I will speak to you very soon remember to be kind to yourself because you deserve to be happy lots of love